Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a bunch of episodes about something that we've not discussed before and it's the Toyota Celica that you see uh, behind me over there. And this car has been an ongoing project over here and why it is special in a way if you really know your stuff. Actually, I would be very impressed if you could tell from here that that is a 3S GTE engine or what some people call the baby 2JZ that's built into that car which it never came with and it's also converted to four-wheel drive from a 1996 4 model this is a 2001 model um, when it came out it was kind of a spaceshipy looking car but performance wise it was never much of a JDM or Japanese car legend um, and of course people got used to the spaceship looks and all cars look like spaceships now so it's not super special in that aspect but that 4 was a very 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 special car um, there's also a Carlos Sainz version I'm not sure if all 4's are Carlos Sainz versions or not I'm not really much of a Celica expert but uh, our client got us all the parts from this four-wheel drive model and the motor and um, that has a very specific type of McPherson strut called a super strut which is supposed to help with torque steer and all the stuff to make a front-wheel drive car with big power perform and um, so we put all that in the car it's been a lot of work uh, because nothing even remotely fitted um, and I'll show you guys some things that we've done uh, on this car to make that happen and this car has been an ongoing project over here and why it is special in a way if you really know your stuff actually i would be very impressed if you could tell from here that that is a 3s gte engine or what some people call the baby 2jz that's built into that car which it never came with and it's also converted to four-wheel drive from a four model this is a 2001 model um, when it came out it was kind of a spaceshipy looking car but performance wise it was never much of a JDM or Japanese car legend um, and of course people got used to the spaceship looks and all cars look like spaceships now so it's not super special in that aspect but that 4 was a very 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 special car uh, our client got us all the parts from this four wheel drive model and the motor and um, that has a very specific type of McPherson strut called a super strut which is supposed to help with torque steer and all this stuff and make a front wheel drive car with big power perform um, so we put all that in that car it's been a lot of work uh, because nothing even remotely fitted um, and I'll show you guys some things that we've done uh, on this car to make that happen this is one of those typical things that seems very simple when it's done, but it's been a lot of work because we had to align the front and rear axle with the struts perfectly before we could start. And another big problem was the fitment of the motor, which is very, very tight in this chassis. A lot of the attachment points for the front and rear axle we had to make out of nothing because they totally interfered with the position of the original subframes. And because we had to remove the tank, we're blocking off the cabin from the rear so we can install a racing tank in the rear. Over here you can see some of the pieces that we made to fit the rear axle. Um, that point obviously did not uh, sit in the newer model car. Uh, only the old model has that attachment so we had to make that. And there we made a nice little box um, with the bushing in it that's threaded. And I welded a fine thread bushing on there and that's gonna be going right over there where the black dot is we're gonna drill a hole to accommodate the bushing and then we're gonna weld that whole plate up here we're gonna make some ears over here to sit on this cross member so the cross member bolts in from that direction and there's the plate spot welded into its position and there's the ear 
and that's what it looks like from the top uh, as you can see this cross member has a very uh, difficultly placed uh, motor mount on it so that's uh, kind of a problem a lot of times uh, people think that uh, a motor swap simply means finding out where mounting points need to go and create those mounting points and it's like what we did over there so we made those mounting points that are not there normally and that section is going to get boxed off of course don't you worry about a thing but what happens the most which is the most difficult is that there's no room for a component like over here there's supposed to be a motor mount but um, it also has to pass through from the underside because the uh, gearbox can never go in from the top with the motor attached it's just not enough room in the chassis um, so it always has to go come up like a 911 like from the bottom uh, upwards engine and gearbox um, and that's like difficult because there's just not no space for this cross member like it has a motor mount over there it has a motor mount over there and it can physically not pass through this beam and because this is a road car like on a race car it probably would have cut everything out over here and make our own but this is a road car and it's all crash structure um, it has to be uh, registered for the road again so you're not ever going to get a tube frame a thing like approved um, so we need to find a solution to make sure that it can still pass through um, this motor mount uh, or gear transmission mount but it holds the transmission and the motor of course it needs to be able to pass through from underneath because there's absolutely no way that this motor is ever gonna uh, go in from the top uh, it's actually very 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 narrow as you can see uh, we still have some clearance to go before that lines up with the bolt and we're already super close here with the oil fill cap of course that's also the location of the vehicle's fin and here we're already made this uh, motor mount or transmission mount so that's the correct position um, so yeah, so that's um, that's what she's gonna sit like. You can see that it needs to come up from underneath. And here is one of the big problems of this build. This is extremely tight, as you can see. Um, this chassis rail is also very, very thin over there. So it's again one of those things that people say, yeah, I just cut a piece out of the chassis rail and do this and do that and make it work. But there is really no material here to leave. Uh, to remove and as you can see that also prohibits the motor from coming in from above so it can never go past that point there you can see where we altered that mount and here's the second uh, motor mount uh, that's basically completely the standard position and there on top you see the fourth mount uh, which is one that we completely uh, redid um, again, as you can see over here, there's no way that this transmission could pass through the chassis rail from the top. We're already extremely lucky that there is some room over here. Um, yeah, so it's it's a very difficult motor to fit in a different chassis. Like with the rear-wheel drive cars, you move into the transmission tunnel, where there's always some room, and if there isn't any room, you can make your own transmission tunnel, which we've done many times. But with these kinds of builds, like you're working with two cross members, um, there's one over there and there's one with the yellow writings on it we actually had the motor and the subframe sitting here on these um, jack stands and then lowered the car up on top of it and that's how it ends up so i obviously checked if everything uh, was sitting level and everything so it's sitting perfectly well right now so very happy with that but um, it's one of those things like it's not very easy to do this especially if it's a a road car um, it would simply mean that you cannot do this swap without doing a tube frame on the front um, so um, this is like one of those things that we try to contemplate doing this project and somebody told us it had already been done by a company but they did not use this exact same setup they didn't use this subframe or this engine um, so yeah this is like really really close um, if you wanted to uh, <sighs> think about what what kind of work goes into this from the start it's very very difficult to tell people how much work it's going to be so you can see uh, one of the more difficult mounts that we made looks very very simple uh, but we actually had to cut this piece off of this piece and move it this has been changed as well 
as you can see we had to cut a lot of things off of this uh, this thing has been uh, altered and here you can see that this bolt is very close to this bracket um, so it's one of those things like this is an extremely important mount of course uh, because that holds the transmission in and over here you can see that we made another mount so in here you can see it's very very close the fill cap is close to the bulkhead which has the wiper motor and everything in there so it would not be easy to change it and it's got the VIN number in there so you don't want to change much of that over here it was also very very tight here you can see that it's tight over there um, a lot of work went into this motor mount over here uh, can't even imagine how many hours but a lot of them and uh, yeah so it's finally sitting in the car as I said this is like really really a close call with the fitment for builds like these um, you should never overlook the fasteners a lot of people buy these parts that they need to do a swap like a subframe an engine and a gearbox and a steering rack but you need all these little small nickel and dime things nothing um, regarding bol nuts and bolts was included with the parts that we got so um, Kevin sourced a huge amount of fasteners from Toyota and as you can see they're all super weird shape so there's no way that you can use uh, anything different than original um, weird pitch thread or with like you know, these stump heads so it goes in easier. Don't forget to take a look at our website as well, einzel.nl. We ship worldwide, of course, Wisefab, Feel Suspension, our own brand Einzel, gearboxes, quick change differentials, axles, all kinds of things. A lot of fabrication components, of course, air jacks, subframes for quick change, you name it. Drop us an email and we'll hook you up. And there's the inside of these newer suspension domes inside of this plate that we made over there and there you can see that we closed off the gap and uh, as I've explained many times on this channel we try to make everything square so cars are not square at all so if you want to put a window or something in it uh, you need to uh, go to a square shape as quickly as possible because it's very easy to make a, a square window so there's going to be a window in here so the driver can still uh, see out the back and this is where we're going to put a racing fuel cell uh, the reason why uh, we did it this way is because uh, the pickup points for the subframe as you can see over there are on the location of the original tank so the only option that we had was to use uh, an external tank which of course needs to be a race tank to be perfectly safe again seal it off um, because like as soon as there's any gap or anything left open uh, you're gonna get a lot of um, uh, smell and smoke and whatever inside the car um, so yeah so that's um, what it looks like and as you can see we were very lucky because there's very little room out back there for the last uh, nut of the shock top mount um, the suspension turrets of the car from the factory are completely wrong for this setup so we had to make our own from scratch so here you can see the um, suspension tower that we made because nothing of course fits in that car um, so uh, we had to make our own uh, suspension turret of course over here is still a little um, burnt up stuff that we're going to remove that's from the welding uh, it's very important. This was uh, welded from the inside. Uh, here you can see the box section that we made for the subframe piece. Um, so that's where the plate sits underneath. That's where we're making that little notch. Uh, so you're able to uh, access the bolts for the differential. On this side it's the same. So there's a tower that we made. Um, gave it a couple tags over here um, but the, the general structure is on the inside and again here's the box section that we made for the subframe important to seal it all off um, yeah.